First official episode of Ram Center. I'm your co-host James Jackson. And I'm Spencer McCutcher. James, man, it feels great to finally get a full episode out here. I'm excited to see what we got going. Yeah, it feels good to be back. We got a brand new cast joining us this yep. season. Got a lot of great things to talk about. Absolutely. You know, how, How's school going? It's going well. A little stressful in the beginning. You're telling me, not man. gonna lie. You're telling me, not enough hey, time in the day. Is we're there. doing big things. We're doing big things. Awesome. I'm excited to get going. Let's get talking about Westchester sports. Our RWCU's prolific offense was on full display this past weekend as the Golden Rams opened up conference play with a victory over Lock Haven University with a score of 35 to 14. With the injury to SCAR quarterback Paul Dooley, backup quarterback A.J. Long stepped into the spotlight and what a debut it was. He went 12 for 18 for 198 yards and two touchdowns through the air, also carried the ball 15 times for 181 yards on the ground. Defensively, it was starting middle linebacker, senior Tyler Morrissey, with a monster game registering 16 tackles on the day. Although Lockheim was able to post 388 total yards of offense on the day, it was key stops and timely takeaways that helped secure the victory for the purple and gold. The Rams moved to 3-1 and one on the season and return home this weekend as they face Kutztown in a pivotal conference matchup, and it's almost a must-win for a football team. It's a must-win. Both teams are 3-1 and one, uh, going into it. I'm excited to see... AJ play really well again. He played a great game starting his, he came in, you know, every once in a while in the starting, like, wildcat formation, but mm -hmm. I was excited to see that he went through the air a lot and he played very well. Adds a different dimension to this Westchester offense, which was already so exciting to see, so right. that'll be great to see this weekend. It's going to be a defensive battle this weekend. Yeah, always a good game against Goodstown. Can't wait, can't wait. Now to switch over to Westchester women's volleyball team as they continued their dominant season with a home win over conference rival Seton Hill this past weekend in a 3-0 sweep. The game was dominated by the Lady Rams at the net as junior Abby Dishard and senior Carly Lutz each posted 10 kills on the evening. Senior Victoria Cruciani also added her stamp on the game as she came up with 10 crucial blocks in the win. This marks the first time that Westchester has beaten Seton Hill since 2009 and the first win against the Griffins since Seton Hill joined the PSAC. The win gives the Lady Rams a record of 8-2 and, and moves them into first place in the PSAC Southeast Division. Their next game will be on the road at Clarence University on Friday the 29th, where they look to keep up the hot streak. Now, James, going in, volleyball always been kind of up in the air here. Mm -hmm. But now, hot start, 8-2. and two, What do you got going for the rest of the season? Well, they need to keep you know, the dominant start or dominant play at the net alive. That's where we see Westchester getting a lot of their wins, is not allow teams to get those spikes, get those points uh, hard on the ground. Um, but they're also in a very, very tough PSAC division for volleyball and a tough you know, D2 division overall for volleyball. Eight and two, and we still haven't seen them crack the top 25 yet, so good play has to continue. Right, and we're getting into the heart of PSAC play where you got Strasburg, you got Cutstown, you got Bloom, all mm -hmm. great volleyball teams going forward. So now we head over to Jocelyn Baker, who's there with our women's rugby team. Jocelyn? Thanks, guys. Here at Rockwell Field at Westchester University, I'm here with the women's rugby team, where last season we had a six and four record, three and three at home. Unfortunately, they had a season-ending loss against Quinnipiac. This season, we are currently standing at a one and two record with two tough losses at home. We're looking to improve and hopefully get back to the playoffs. I'm Jocelyn Baker, back to you at Ram Center. Thanks guys, my name is Tyler Jefferson and this is This Day in Sports. On September 28, 1955, NBC was the first television company to broadcast a baseball game in color. Game one of the 1955 World Series featured the eventual champions, the Brooklyn Dodgers and the New York Yankees. The Yankees eventually came out on top with a 6-5 to five victory. NBC was also the first company to broadcast a game in 1951 and 1958. The first audio of a game was produced by NBC and was called the one and only Vince Scully. For this day in sports, I'm Tyler Jefferson and back to James and Spencer. Now getting back to our Westchester sports, our cross country team finished an impressive fifth overall out of 16 schools at the Lock Haven Invitational this past weekend. It was sophomore Dylan Smiley who led the pack, finishing seventh overall to help propel Westchester into the fifth slot. Smiley finished with a time of 26 minutes and 47 seconds, which is tied for fourth best ever at Lock Haven's course. 
The squad returns to action Saturday the 29th as they travel to Lehigh, PA for the Paul Short Invitational. And that's good signs from our cross-country team. Um, trying to get back to where they were last year. Stumbled in their first couple of meets. But Dylan Smiley, shout out Phoenixville there. Yay. Leading the pack over there to put them in the fifth slot. There you go. And, it, and it's, I'm glad we're finally getting to know. I mean, around campus, you don't, we don't hear anything about the cross-country team. Mm -hmm. But the way that they're, they're performing so well this season, individually and collectively, I'm excited to see just them going forward and hopefully just keep hearing them. Right, and a lot of those those cross-country runners, you know, translate to the track field yep. as well, so it's good to see that they're getting good production from cross-country because then hopefully that translates over right into short distance and, and track, track and field. And our track team is always good, yep. always good. So it's good to see. Now to transition to our women's soccer team. They also came up with a big statement win against Bloomsburg University with a score of 2-1. to one. Bloom was able to open up the scoring just 10 minutes into the game with a goal. However, Westchester locked it down after that, allowing no more scoring chances. The Lady Rams responded in the 30th minute as junior Carmen Telesco recorded her first goal of the season. The score remained tied at one until the 59th minute when senior Shannon Cooley found herself, found herself in the right spot, knocking a deflection off a of Bloomsburg save. Westchester's defense was working super hard, only allowing two shots on net the entire game. The win puts the Lady Rams at 5-1-1 one one, with the sole loss coming against Seton Hill. The Lady Rams are back in action on the 27th as they take on rival Kutztown, and that should be an exciting game going forward. Now, James, it was a tough loss early. Mm -hmm. we, were, we were ranked, what, like third in the country coming into the season, yep. had that undefeated season last year, lost a heartbreaking game in the PSAC tournament at the East Strasburg. It's finally, you were finally getting that stride back now. Mm -hmm. And we lost a lot of seniors from that undefeated season last year. And it's good that the ladies kept their head um, and didn't let the whole season slide after that tough loss to Seton Hill. In the second game of the year, I believe right. it was. And, too. and they come back, bounce back strong. And Bloomsburg is, is no, no uh, small feat. That's a right. big win, a huge win. Um, but we've seen the defense step up huge, not allowing many scoring chances in any of the first uh, seven games of the right. season. We already have two clean sheets from the goalkeeper. Right. So Westchester are looking strong in a lot of sports and then both football and women's soccer play cuts down this weekend so that's that's something to watch and it's always going to be fun when, when you get cuts down in there especially coming to rockwell field mm -hmm. so now we're going to actually send it to connor with a men's soccer field report i'm here with tim french one of the captains of the westchester men's soccer team uh tim you guys start off the season five one and one what do you think you attribute the early success to uh just a lot of the guys their motivation at practice and you know we're coming out here every day at practice and Giving it all we have, and it's showing in the games, which is, which is really good for us. Um, just a lot of hard work and determination from all of us to, to try and win a PSAC championship and bring it to Westchester. So you guys lost some pretty uh, key contributors last season, like uh, Miguel Ross and Brian Schaefer. Uh, have you found some players to kind of fill that void and step up in the senior leadership? Yeah, I, I do believe we found um, some good players, some good quality players to. Um, I mean, those two guys are good players that uh, contributed a lot to our success. Um, but we just have a lot of different guys in the midfield um, playing, you know, their roles and, you know, they're contributing for us. And, um, you know, for me as a captain, um, you know, I feel like I've been, you know, trying to organize us a little bit more on the field, you know, with some of the newer guys coming in. But, I mean, with the record we have and just the, the season that we've started with, I think, uh, you know, we're clicking on all cylinders. So I'm excited for, you know, what the future holds. So as the captain of this team, what uh, kind of responsibilities do you feel fall on your shoulders kind of leading the rest of the squad? I, I, as a captain, um, I just believe that, you know, a lot of the guys look up to me and, you know, from what my experience here at Westchester and, you know, the things that I've done here, I kind of, you know, I've seen just about everything, you know, when it comes to, you know, being up, you know, being down in the game or, you know, even off the field as well and dealing with adversity. But, um, you know, it's my job to, you know, just keep the guys, you know, keep them moving and, you know, going in the, you know, winning pattern. Uh, we want to, you know, we just, we always stress, you know, just being smart, you know, outside of, like, outside of soccer. And then when you get here, it's, you know, more productive. So, I mean, as the captain, it's, it's important for me, Colin Hester and Brett Glasgow to, you know, really navigate these guys and steer them in the right direction. One last question for you, Tim. Um, as you enter the bulk of your season, uh, what kind of expectations do you have for your team uh, moving forward? I mean, just kind of to keep doing what we're doing. Um, we feel like we haven't even hit our fullest potential yet, so you know we're excited that you know come midseason we're a little bit in better shape and our chemistry has been you know becoming a lot better. So um, if we just continue to you know put goals, put balls in the net, and you know keep teams out of our net from scoring. Um, you know, we should, you know, find success and 
just hope to keep rolling. You know, we're four-game winning streak right now. You know, to keep that going would be great. I'm here at Rockwell Field with Coach Michael Ben of the men's soccer team. Coach, last season you finished 11-5-3 and, and qualified for the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2002. How did these uh, high expectations last year roll into this season? I think it gave the players confidence. Uh, I think that, you know, they had a goal now that they've tasted a little bit that they wanted to get back to it. Uh, we've tried to make sure they understand that last year was last year and that we had to go out and take all the things that made us be able to reach that last year and go through all that again. Um, and so the players have done a good job of keeping their focus uh, and, and hopefully we'll get a chance to go uh, be in the NCAA tournament again. So coach, you are 5-1-1 one, one on the season so far and undefeated in a PSAC play. What are some positives that you've taken away from this season? I think so far we've defended very well. Uh, I think that our, we have good leadership with our senior class uh, and we're a very deep team. So we're able to go to the bench, make substitutions, and our level doesn't drop much at all. Whereas, so we're trying to keep the pace of the game high, make the opponent have to go to their bench where they'll probably drop their level, and hopefully we can continue to, to keep their foot on the gas and keep the pace high. And what are some improvements you think you can build upon? I think there's, we're still not where we want. I don't think we've played our best game yet, as I've told our guys. I don't think we've put together a complete 90 minutes. Uh, but, you know, there's still lots of little things that we can clean up. I think we're doing fairly well across all, all facets of the game. Um, but we just want to be able to do it a little quicker, a little cleaner, uh, a little more consistently. So, Coach, last season you had some senior leadership that uh, moved on and graduated. Uh, who are some players that you expect to step up and kind of fill that role this season? I think we have a great group of seniors. Uh, we have three captains, Tim French, Colin Hester, and Breck Glasgow, who was also a captain last year as a junior. Uh, and those three in particular have been great leaders for us. They're a very accomplished group of players, uh, but also the right kind of people to help lead our program. But we have seven seniors total, uh, and you know, as a group, they're doing a really good job of making sure our younger players understand what our standards are and, and how we go about our business. And one last question for you, Coach. Uh, what are your expectations for this season to come? I know you've started off with a really hot start, um, qualified for the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2002. Do you wish to build upon that this year? We're trying to take it one game at a time right now, but certainly the start of the season we've had is started to be able to get us closer to accomplishing our first goal, which is qualifying for the postseason PSAC tournament. Um, couple more results to go our way and we'll be able to check that off our list here pretty soon hopefully uh, and then we could start to think more about maybe hosting that tournament and positioning ourselves again to be in the NCAA tournament but our big goal is to try to win a PSAC championship. All right great to hear coach thanks for talking to Wes having to spend some time good luck with the rest of the season. Yep, thank you. That was Michael Ben and Tim French the head coach and one of the captains of the Westchester men's soccer team they look to continue their season after a hot 5-1-1 one one start for Ram Center, this is Connor Sodak at Rockwell Field. See you guys next time. Thanks, Connor. Hey, Rams. Jocelyn Baker here with a pro sports update. It was an unpredictable week three in the NFL. There were five games in the 1 o'clock slate that came down to the wire, with Tom Brady throwing a touchdown in the last minutes as the Pats beat the Texans. The Lions came up a half a yard short in their loss to the Falcons, and the Steelers got upset by the Bears in overtime in Chicago. But the game of the week was the local team, Philadelphia Eagles, who beat the New York Giants on a last second, 61-yard field goal by rookie kicker Jake Elliott. Transitioning to baseball, the playoffs are officially set for both the American League and the National League. The wild card game in the AL will be the Minnesota Twins, visiting the New York Yankees. The winner of the game series will have to play the red-hot Cleveland Indians. The other ALDS matchup is set with the Astros facing off against the Boston Red Sox. In the NL, the wild card game will feature the Arizona Diamondbacks and the Colorado Rockies. The winner of the game will play the Dodgers, baseball's best team. The other matchup, the defending World Series champs, the Chicago Cubs, and the Washington Nationals. Now to a very eventful offseason in the NBA as the association got flipped around a little more with the Thunder acquiring Carmelo Anthony from the New York Knicks. And now the best friends are back together this time in Cleveland, as Dwayne Wade signed a one-year contract to be with his buddy LeBron James. Going to be an exciting year in the NBA. For this Pro Sports Update, I'm Jocelyn Baker. Back to James and Spencer. Thanks, Joss, and wow, what an offseason it has been in the NBA. Yeah, a lot of, lot of faces in a lot of different places this year. Um, it should shake up a lot and make what was kind of a dull NBA season in the last couple of years very, very interesting to watch now. Right, exactly. I'm excited to see the best friends back together. D-Wade and LeBron back together.